What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Robski calling in once again. It is February 13th, uh, 2019, and I am doing yet another book review. Now, this particular book that I got, um, my little brother Dusty decided to um, recommend this book to me, and I'm glad he did because I'm a huge science fiction fan. Um, I absolutely love Sphere by Michael Crichton. Um, you know, Stephen King has some elements of science fiction. Um, this book ser particular book series came out in uh, the early 2010s, and um, there was a Discovery um, series, and now the series went to Amazon Prime. But um, again, I'm a huge science fiction fan, huge reader. So, and this is a brand new author. Well, actually, it's a pseudo, it's a pen name for two separate authors. Um, that's uh, they're loosely tied with George R. R. Martin, the writer of the Game of Thrones. But I'm very excited about this book because of the content and just um, it's it's a very it's a, it's a very realistic. Um, it's set in a, in a universe that's you know thousands of years from now, but yet it has a very realistic uh, feel. Basically, the the author did some research on what space travel is really like. So the terminology, the gravity, it's not like Star Wars where all of a sudden they're just in uh, you know light speed. This is a very realistic um, science fiction no novel if there is such a thing. Okay, This novel, of course, which I'm talking about is called, you see here, Leviathan Wakes. Um, it's the first book um, of the series called The Expanse series. First of the novel is called Leviathan Wakes. Okay, now this book clocks in. It's a, it's a pretty long book. Clocks in, and I'm showing. If you talk about the, if you read the prologue and the epilogue, uh, 561 pages, and then there's also some acknowledgments at the back. Okay, um, and this author James S. Corey is actually a pen name for a couple authors. Okay, so. I love this book um, because it was written in, in 2010. Um, it's actually kind of ahead of its time. The, the author, um, well, authors talked about the end of the book on kind of, there's two main characters. Um, I'm actually going to go through the plot and then I'm going to kind of throw in the twist on um, why these two characters are significant for nowadays and why this book was actually ahead of its time as far as this. But anyways, so the, the, the loose plot is it starts out um, from the point of view of a um, OPA member, a crew member named Julie Mayo. Okay, now this Julie Mayo has a as a background in jujitsu because she was formerly attacked, and she was also um, she's she was a she was a daughter of wealthy parents, but she was a very she was one of the people she really liked being with common people and she was kind of a I don't want to say humanist but even though she was with an elitist family she wanted to be um, with normal people okay so so Julie Mayo um, is on this ship called the Scopula I believe and it's been attacked by these unknown pirates and she's been infected by this mutagen um, I think it's called the Phoebe bug or something like that um, so the story starts off her point of view. It talks about how her crew was captured and killed and she stranded on the ship and she got infected with this bug that, that, that these people, unknown people, affected with her. Okay. Um, so that's how it starts off. And then um, this book, in this universe, there's basically three separate parties. Okay. You have the Earth people. You have the people of Mars, and those are the two big key players. But in between that, you have what they know as belters. So people that grew up basically in the middle of space um, on space stations. Okay, um, There's like Thoth Station, Euro Station, Tycho Station. Those um, become really important in the book. But so it talks about um, this Julie Mao. And her background, she's she studies jujitsu because of a formal first attack, and she's also drives um, a race uh, a race vessel. Okay, so she's into racing. She kind of has a little bit of a tomboy, um, you know, kind of a, a, a tomboy type 
um, woman, a lot, a lot of, you know, a very uh, type of woman that a lot of people like to be associated with. You know, she works very hard. So anyway, it starts out, she gets overtaken by the bug and, um, that starts out the book. Okay. Now in this book, it goes to the, after it talks about Julie, it talks about the first main character, which is a man by the last name, by the name of Jim Holden. And Jim Holden is basically a former UNN, so he's part of the Navy. He's a formal na former Navy captain, and then he's captaining this ship, um, and this ship called the Canterbury, I believe. And and on this ship, on this uh, ship, there's um, uh, a pilot by the name of Avery, and then a mechanic by the name of Amos, and second of a commander, um, her name is Naomi, and. Uh, um, and then there's some other characters. Well, these guys get overtaken. Um, they, first of all, they witness the space pirates taking out the Scopuli, Scopelia, or however you say it. And, uh, um, so this Holden gets on the, on it because he's figuring, well, someone from Mars did it. So he basically gets on, um, the broadcast and, and broadcast this and says that, uh, yeah, you know, Mars, just attacked a uh, uh, belt or ship, okay? And so the people on the asteroid belt um, go crazy, okay? And so Holden and his crew are out there in space, and, and they saw this attack, treacherous attack, and they go. Um, and, and you find out Jim Holden later, he's a very um, pious man. He's very... Um, relative to who he, he he's the he's the archetypical hero okay he's he's the one with all the positive traits the he's the attractive man um you know he does everything that's morally correct supposedly um now i say that i'm not talking about like you know jim holden will go to a bar and he sleeps with women okay so i'm not talking about that kind of morals i'm talking about ethics i'm talking about um you know, he, he's by the book kind of guy. Okay. He's seen as a very moral character and does things, you know, he doesn't do things they're shitty underhanded. Okay. So we go from his point of view, he witnesses this assault. And so he broadcasts this out. And then there's um, this Martian ship called the Doniger and they want to pull him in for questioning, which they end up doing. Okay. So that starts out the book. Then it goes to a point of view of the Jim Holden's um, polar 180 degree opposite. And he's by far my favorite character of the book because one, I love anti-heroes because anti-heroes are so much more like us, so much more real. Um, this would be Detective Joseph Miller. Okay, Now Miller's background is he is a uh, police officer who's um, on the station in, in the belt. And he works for the Star Helix, or a private detective. So basically, he's a cop, okay? And uh, riots start breaking out because they saw this attack. And so he has to shoot some people and, and, and you know, just basically keep order, okay? But uh, he's kind of like, he has a little bit of dirty hair in him. He's like a, he's kind of like a rogue cop, okay? Um, also, he's in charge to start out with. He's he's on the Julie Mayo case, so he's he's trying to find out what happened to this Julie Mayo, okay. And uh, so he goes there, and the riots break out, and then um, meanwhile, Holden's crew gets captured by the Martian ship. Well, the Martian ship gets raided because the the people that um, killed the Scopuli that had Mayo, Julie Mayo on it. They are trying to cover up the witnesses, so they try to kill um, Holden's crew. Well, the Martian Marines hold these attackers off. They all die except Holden's crew. Holden's crew escapes that and heads to, um, I believe it was Euros Space Station. Okay. Meanwhile, all this is going on. Jim Miller, I mean, sorry, Joseph Miller, is um, looking at this case. He's investigating. Well, he gets fired by his own um, company because he's digging too too far in the Julia, uh, Julia Mayo case, okay? So he gets fired, but he still wants to know what happens. Um, he finds out about um, Holden's crew, and he's really good at detecting the dots, 
So he goes he goes after the station after him, right? So Holden's crew um, got uh, information from these people, and it turns out that's where Ju uh, the Julie Mayo's um, uh, spot was. Okay, so so Miller goes, but he's not looking for Mayo. He's actually looking for this crew, and they all meet up in this room, and Holden's crew is about ready to get overtaken, and Miller knows what's going on, so Miller fights him, and get, they get in a gunfight. That's how they first meet, which is really cool. And... Uh, they're like, okay, it's time to escape this station because what was happening is in this Euro station, um, this false uh, security crew came in. It's actually a bunch of ex-cons. They were um, having these people get infected and, and poisoned with radiation poison to speed up this virus they're testing to test on Mayo. They actually find um, Mayo's body. She's all deformed because she got infected by the virus. And so she they figured her for dead, so they put her in a body bag. And um, that was that. And meanwhile, this whole station is getting infected. Well, Holden and Miller, Miller helps Holden escape, just barely escape. And they get, they get um, just in the nick of time, they escape with all these like zombie people and, and people the infected fighting the, the crowd control. And um, they escape and they meet up and then Holden and Miller get cured. And then they keep doing investigation. Basically, they find out who um, made this bad virus. And so the first mission was they were going to go raid the people that did it. And they caught the people. They caught the scientist. Well, Miller shoots a scientist in the head. They cut, captured without trial or warning because he knows he's getting off scot-free and the guy needs to die. Holden gets mad because he gets all by the book. So they kick off Miller. said, Miller, you're finding your new way to ride home. They kind of reconcile a little bit until so they come up with another mission. They need to destroy this Euro station because it has the rest of the mutagen on it. Uh, Miller, um, is job is to go put the bomb on the station and then Holden's crew is going to come out, off and then shoot rockets at it so it veers away from Earth, right? Or they're going to kill it. Well, somehow the station moves and when Holden gets there, it keeps hearing these voices. And, and Sorry, when Miller gets there, it keeps hearing these voices. And um, there's all these voices. It's kind of like he's not knowing what he understands. It's almost like the station um, comes alive. And there's a huge surprise that it, it makes this book really good at the end. I'm not going to spoil it because I really want you YouTubers or, you know, even if it's just one or two, you, I really want you to pick this up and read it. But basically, this um, Miller gets in there in the station and then... Um, he does his job, but he does it in a way that's worth reading. So overall, I give this book um, 9 out of 10. It's a great book, guys. Um, great series. I can't wait to pick up the next one. And um, I also want to read the television series. Um, but again, I really like the conflict between Holden and Miller because they turn out to kind of be partners. But again, it's one of those like um, it's like you got the you got the typical textbook archetypical hero. You got the, you know, King Arthur type hero. You got the Peter Pan type guy in Holden. And then you got Miller, who's more like Richard B. Riddick or Dirty Harry or, or Batman, you know. And, and it's just great how this author does it. Again, this is Rob um, finishing up his book report. Um, Leviathan Wakens, the first book of the Expanse series. Guys, go check it out. Rob out.